Rambo is looking like they can push for oh! victory! DPZ left a deep penalty zone, plus a blazing duet that's already two down in that single engagement, plus a push by Echo. Beautiful. Sanford literally waits for the very last second. It looks like he's about to touch the ground Dude, before he flickers. I think that's an EXP later's wet dream. Yes, it was definitely my wet dream for sure. I'm going to be thinking about that tonight. Given the Kadira is very wet. It's, oh, yeah. Woo! I mean, it's some hot stuff here, but let's keep in mind that Echo, every single move that they've made, they force something out of uh, Fim going into the purple buff. Oh, we managed to get Kazuwe's uh, retribution. Now he can't fight for the neutral objective. We go deeper in. Early rotations coming in from Sanford to guarantee the lead for Benny QT as well as Call of Duty. And now look at this. All of that early game set up making sure that this one is basically impossible for uh, for Fim to even get close. I gotta say, man, from the early stages of the game up until right now, every single bush, it feels like it's Echo's bush. Every single time you want to check for vision, every single the time you have the attention of finding farm you're gonna get punished and i think that is the most that's the biggest different uh, difference maker here because five flux impurity every single time they're moving they're gonna get caught yeah i think echo here is making the most of this 9k almost 10k gold lead they are translating this financial uh, advantage into space because again they have better uh, face checking they have better vision given the extra defensive items that are rocking compared to finn who has to very safely rely on the hook boy yo he loses out his flicker here so that's one tool gone now maybe he can do something oh black dragon four my alien and there's muddles dropped in very low force to use the rough waves on out he does survive using the petrify as well here comes the alien and here comes the top cap from the turkish squad and sanford very low there's a the damage and he goes down sanji as well sam sam is down traded out for alien and he oh! gets back down by Why? Every single time we see this Turkish delight, their version of the Uve, their version as Junior Blacklist, they know how to high ground defense like no other. Yo, shout out to Apex for a second. We're going to check back the replay. Hookman. Not just Hookman, man, but he saved the O for Betty Cutie because look at this. Apex 47, the green light. He still has his O. He's saving it. He's like, wait, there's one member missing. Cross is waiting, but look at his Betty Cutie. He was shut down. He was suppressed. After that, it's game over, man. He literally said, nothing personal, kid. Flickers behind him just to get the bloody hunt down. And this is just raw preparation from the side of Fireflux Impunity, right? Great preparation. They know the habits of Echo. I just gotta say, man, just now the goalie was almost like, what, 10K? Now it's 4.4. Cut in half. Cut in half. That's how big that team fight was. I mean, it's huge shutdowns all across the board. All easy end up dying there. Sanford end up dying there. More importantly, Sanji ended up dying there. Dude, look at the Lord advantage. Negative 3.6. Negative 3.6. I'm sure they got a lot of push, and that is amazing. Don't get me wrong, but this 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 show that Fireflux Impunity now they're breathing in life a bit. Yep, I think that's step one in maybe a four or five step process. Grand Theft Purple here committed by Carl TZ. That's one charge, pleading guilty. Given that, 10 seconds away from this Luminous Lord, I think a penetration is in check. Given that Fimp have yet to take one turret, so they still need to work on the waves. Well, let's keep in mind, the last time we saw Echo actually push and lose out the high ground fight was all because, well, Yaoi, he did have his flicker available, but everybody else, their battle spells were not ready to go, so they couldn't force out the play. And with Yaoi not catching somebody with a divine judgment means that they had to pull back, but they were confident. That's when we see Fireflux and Beauty start abusing them. And Whoa. now, playing the map on their side, how can Laying it down to the very last week, so well done as they claim more gold and scavenge this game back. Honestly, I like it because I kind of feel like taking the Lord now would be very, very risky, so might as well take a safer objective. And mm -hmm. I kind of feel like they want Echo to push in because, as we saw just now, they have the potential of countering, they have the potential 
of actually making or forcing mistakes from Echo. So they want this. Early concealed by Yaoi, Lord trampling in, and there's a flicker! Whoa! Oh, Apex pulls just a save! And Alien survives along the way! A man down for Echo! What? They still have the Lord, but Fimp already looking great in this defense. That was... I, I don't know what to say about was that. Was that not the cleanest look? I, it was the cleanest save. It was one of the cleaner ones, but it looked so... It looked like it went right through Yaoi, and Dude. then he walked right back into it. Don't tell me you feel cheated, man. Oh, uh, no, no, not just yet. Right. Not until All we right. see the replay in slow-mo. One right. more time. Right. <laughs> just messing with you. But yeah, Leo, like, that was an amazing defense. It was, it was. And yeah, they did lose two inhibitors. But in the end, I think Firefox One is happy to at least get something along the way. Here's another instant replay. All right, you asked for it. Okay, here we go this time. Let's see if my old eyes can catch this in time. So we do see how he actually flickering forward. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. He dashes into the hook right at the end. If he just didn't dash, it would have been totally fine. You have good eyes, by the way. Thank God. Very, very good eyes. This just speaks of how well Apex understands the physics of the Iron Hulk, but now... Yowie looking for revenge. Oh, Black Dragon playing my alien. Oh, not gonna oh, leave much here. This is not a good engage. Yeah, I mean, nothing to worry about. Still 70 more seconds until the next board comes back up. So I think even for Fimp this time, they can just wait it out, get their cooldowns back online, and then look to fight. Because again, no inhibitors. So they can just wait for the wave to push into them. Right now, we're living in a moment, but let's look into the future, right? Like, what are both teams looking for right now? Because... It is very clear here that Yaoi has been, I would say, the linchpin of getting any of those engages, except for that one moment when Sanford, with the flicker, crazy engage. But again, it's like, they want to engage, they want to start something. Fire, Flux, Impunity, what are they looking for? Personally, for me, I think a lot of this comes down to the conditioning, right? Fireflux and Purity, they understand how Echo has been moving, how their general play styles are going to look like. And considering that it is that step-by-step -step process, all you gotta do is figure out what step is Echo on right now. Yaoi has tried multiple times, so expect to keep your eyes specifically on Sanji or Sanford. They might look to make one of the bigger plays here for this next fight. And that just translates into the ecosystem, right? You have to understand where you are in the food chain. Yep. And right now, Echo is still on top of the food chain, but slowly but surely, Fire Flux community are crawling back up. And here they understand the dynamic. We still have to sit to the Turkish delight all together now. Now, and I think the way that Kazu is positioning himself he might actually want to contest. You wouldn't do this. You wouldn't hide yourself here if you weren't going to contest. Fim is walking up here. They know that maybe if somebody overextends, they could get a pick, but they know that they can't take a full 5v5 so deep outside of their base. They might as well just go back, wait until it starts pushing into them. Remember, they still have the Melissa on their side. Their high ground defense, honestly, is not that bad. Yeah, right now, as you look at the situation, three straight wars in a row. Firefox and Unity, they let Echo to... Oh, I love this. I, love, I, I, I wanted to talk about this, but freezing the lane mm -hmm. in your own base. I love this because you're forcing Echo to come in, and you're actually stacking your own minions, but now the minion is coming in. Echo, how will they start this fight? Oh, that's the minion. Big Lord coming in. Kuna going for the pull. Alien stacking the Shy Essence. Here comes the Black Dragon form. Yaoi with the conceal. They put you to the rest of the Turkish squad. Oh, and they put Sanji down very low. Alien still up, sustaining, they're gonna lose an inhibitor here. Alien all the way in, deep behind enemy territory, all the wild clock easy, just dashing on through, making a signature right oh. inside their base. Alien's gonna fall here, the blazing duet by Ben Cutie, that's a man down for Firefox Impunity, and they're still here. It's not like Echo is in full health though. Sanford very low, does have any mortality, has to disengage. The Turkish have defended. 
be a game defender for now, and I gotta be very impressive. Carl Tizi goes in, didn't actually hit the damage on the Sunshine. Looking at the base, it's very dangerously low, but even Echo, they're like, we have 9k gold here, but why can't we go in? No, 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 this is all FIMP right here. Alien bought a ridiculous amount of time, and more importantly, got the passive out of Sanchi out as early as possible, including the rough waves. We did, as expected, see Sanford try to make the play, but the follow-up damage from Sanji was not there. He already expanded all of his abilities, and Benny QT is just getting body blocked time and time again by either Kazue or even for Apex. Because again, Apex, he's holding that bloody hunt for if Benny QT oversteps his boundaries. At this point, man, I gotta say, it is time for Echo to kind of like show their mental fortitude, man. Because at this point, you've been trying for quite a while. You got a lot of gold on you. This, this is one of those situations where you could tilt, where you're like, okay, come on, wh what else do you have to do? And at some point, this all-in dive comp is going to hit a ceiling. And I think so far, Fire of Infinity have figured out that ceiling. They're like, all right, they can only mm -hmm. do so much, especially inside our base. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, especially when they're playing a traditional front to back, right? You hit the front line, and as soon as you get rid of them, you move in towards that back side. Now, looking mm -hmm. at Sunshine's items earlier, he is in a very good position. He can chunk everybody from the side of Echo. He is a problem that Echo needs to answer almost straight away. And if Fim is able to kind of stagger the abilities, force the resources on different sides of the map, they have a very good opportunity to take a full 5v5 outside of their base. You were talking about positioning, man. Look at the positioning of Sanji right now. Mm -hmm. Sanji and Yaoi, they're waiting. They're waiting for someone to try to get this push and then try to reverse them out very, very fast. Speaking of which... Oh, no. Fim has been letting go of the lore so far. Will they do the same for this one? Oh, well, I think Kaldizi knows. Kaldizi knows that they're going to go for it quick and that Fim will know that they will go for it quick. But just the same, the Magic said he didn't spot G and Wei. They didn't spot this oh, duo no. from mid. But look at this. Looking for an engage. Oh, look, 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 yeah. look at this. Oh, flickering! Oh, and the boy! No, they no. punish the playmaker! Yao is right. down! I repeat, Yao is down! Alien does draw a line going straight, but Echo secures the Lord. Oh. Apex, Apex looking at Sanji right now. Sanford goes in! Penalty zone for four! Make that five! Apex falls! And that's gonna be one immortality up. Sanford does pay the price. Apex go down. Then Huey and Kogizi deep behind enemy territory. Go oh, no! Down goes Sunshine! Benny Huey gets 2k! No, that's so unfortunate! Fim played that so well, they got everything out of Echo, but at the very end, that split second of thinking, I could turn this around, cost them the game. Echo takes game one. Oh, what a first game in a best of three, where again, a lot are eyeing on Echo to win this one, but again, they were swinging. That was a very hard game, and I gotta say, Fire Flux Impunity, if they do the same thing for game number two, maybe with a different draft, dude, I'm, 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 I'm thinking yesterday the third game went all the way. This one is not impossible. It really isn't impossible, man. I mean, you gotta give it a Fire Flux Impunity. Their defense is impeccable. They've done more than enough research on the World Champions, and they've definitely caught on to a couple of few habits. You could see during the Lord Dance that even they could recognize that, hey, there is a possibility of a backdoor. There is a possibility that Benny QT is just waiting for them. And the adaptations that we saw from Echo, you know what, Benny? Make sure that you're nearby the Lord. Don't try and go for this backdoor just yet. Leave it to both Sanji and as well as Yaoi. We can make it happen. We need to rush down this lore when we find it. I did. I, I just gotta say, a lot, of, a lot happened just now you. Yeah, they figured out the fact that, all right, it looks like Fim is willing to trade. Maybe we should do it. I think that's what they did with Yaoi. They understood that, yeah, 50-50, he could die, and we don't get it in. And Apex has been very hot with his hooks and his bite downs. And that's the Echo Gambit. That's what they played on, and they got away with it, especially after the four, five-man zones. Dude, Sanford is a different beast, man. But I gotta say, Yaoi, Yaoi is, is engaged on the Melissa. It honestly was a lot because when he went in, yes, he died. Yes, the Melissa was able to kill him. But the crazy thing is, Melissa used her Inspire. So by the time Yaoi died and then Echo they want to re-engage, Melissa does not have that crazy lifesteal, does not have that crazy attack speed, making it so that 
it won't have enough damage. So even though, yeah, he died, but I kind of feel like that is a worthy three. That's the Echo Express. The Echo Express? He's I just mean, chugged in, just chugged in. Ooh, ooh just ran him over. Ran him over is is definitely, you know, what I would describe this overall play style, right? Because again, this particular composition, it's all about playmaking. It's all about finding those opportunities to turn the tables against their opponent. And like you mentioned before, yes, the Inspire was a very big deal. They got the alt as well as the Inspire. So not only could she not play defensively, but couldn't turn the tables when the time was right. And honestly, Fireflux Impunity, they set it up perfectly until that final bad call of maybe we could turn this around. Right now we gotta look at the MVP of the game, and the MVP has to go over to Sanford. Honestly, a lot deserving for this young man here. Look at him, he's so happy, but at the same time he's like, uh, oh, chucks guys, come on. I, I only got like four or five people twice. Just another Michael. day, just another day. This is like, I don't know, I do this every single day. It's, it's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a deal at all. Looking at his build as well, he's making sure he's a tanky boy, but makes sure that he has these wings just to ensure that he lives longer. Especially in those clutch moments, it's like, oh, I'm low. Oh, five of you are getting a little too close together. Now we unleash the penalties over the flicker. Maybe we should all start building more blood wings. Mm, I don't or rather know. queen's wings. This is queen's wings. Yeah. yeah. Here's the thing, man. Queen's wings is amazing because it's basically the tenacity built in an item. Mm -hmm. And uh, tenacity plus... It's something, it's something it's else. It's a bunch of health. There's tenacity, there's damage built in. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. skill vamp, spell vamp built in. Yeah. yeah, here's the thing, right? Well, conditional spell vamp. HP? Yep. Yeah, here's the thing. That's what I want to touch on. It's an emblem in an item, plus much more, because like you said, the, the, the healing that you'll get is insane, making it so that he can find for quite a lot. Right now, we're looking at the MVP highlights, and look at this. Carl DZ got pulled, but it's like, the reason let's go away actually says, stay right where you are. I wonder if he has tough boots at that point in time. That'd be interesting to double check as well, but we'll figure it out later. In the meantime, I think what we can talk about for sure is the fact that Fireflux and Unity's defense, especially against Echo, when they're trying to close out these games, probably caught Echo off guard, oh. right? I mean, look at these motions. Alien survives for so much longer than he absolutely should. Melissa gets a free reset off of that, and then right here, this play. Yowie tries to get everything out of him. Alien tries to engage, but almost immediately oh! after the big catch. Keep your eyes on Sunshine, right? He's chunking out everybody. It looks so very good until it isn't. The goat himself forcing everything out of him, and Sunshine decides, you know what? Maybe I'll try to turn it around on Benny. Look at the difference in damage, man. That's what happens when you don't have your Inspire up. But again, you guys heard the reaction of me and Leo. That is one of those engages coming in from an EXP laner that makes it so that no matter what lane you play, all of a sudden you want to be an e EXP leader. I felt the five-man penalty zone. I could have, I swear I could have gotten pulled in too. Mm -hmm. I, I felt my chair. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, same, same. <laughs> Just breaking the fourth wall almost instantaneously. Honestly, looking at the items so far, nothing too crazy, nothing too out of the ordinary. Let me just double check that one more time. Yeah, nothing too out, out, out of the ordinary, but keep in mind that Carl TZ was taking a step back here. He's not looking for that raw damage. That's not his job. That's not his place. More importantly, He's making sure that he does go for uh, formula just to make sure that he lives a little bit longer, making sure that the amount of on-hit damage is negated so that when he comes for the cleanup, it's going to be a little easier even if we do see Sunshine have his Inspire. Right now, honestly, looking at the itemization as well as the goal, I kind of feel like Fire Flux Impunity, if they had a better fight, say in the mid, in the mid stages of the game, right? Because again, we saw how Echo took control throughout the game. It's only during the final pushes where, where Fire Blast Impunity were able to actually control what Echo wants to do. If for the next game, it is not that one-sided going into the end of the game, perhaps it would be a game that I would say 60% Echo still gonna win, but it's not like 70, 80, just like just now. It's not going to be a complete stomp. That's what we know for sure. We know if there's high ground defense from the side of Fireflux Impunity, they can hold on and really drag this out. I'm very curious to know what the mentality must have been like, especially after the first two attempts, right? Like, where were they? What were they feeling? Were they like, man, these guys actually know what they're doing because they were getting absolutely rolled in the early game. Every single objective, and especially when you look at the monster gold stolen, right? 4,145 compared to 299. That's what the Carl TZ uh, farming pattern was all about. That's why he was deep into Kazuo's farm uh, as early as what, minute two, minute three. Mm -hmm. And now thinking about what game two might look like, right? 
60 40 not gonna be a stomp i'd say maybe it's all for firefox community's uh prerogative to try something new here they try to choke down sanford what happened they forced him to show the five-man penalty zone what, I would, if, what if they just leave the xp lane alone what if i think after the game just now the coaches are watching are watching the game right they got to look at the rotation from the jungler especially from carl easy here where we saw he started the purple buff yaoi started the orange buff so by the time he came by he only just had to do a little bit more damage and he gets both buffs relatively quickly so i kind of feel like this is also one of those things that it's like small micro plays but it starts out your own team everyone being one level ahead and i think that's a very big thing to consider that the coaches and, and behind the scenes for five bucks infinity they got to talk about this either try to do something roughly the same or stop it from happening because every site leaders don't like fighting when you're one level behind i totally agree with that and more importantly so you can see the results actually being achieved so early on the early uh the early kill the lethal water falling into the hands of lancelot even before we saw frederick even make it anywhere close he's just one step behind each and every time so hopefully we do see a bit of an adjustment i will imagine that if i was in fireflies impunity side that they'd be looking to say maybe we need stronger laners right benny qt obviously in this in this particular matchup took a step back and samford this was his time with obviously his sans and connection to make it work what this says essentially is comfort ain't enough you have to win mm -hmm. the 50 50 is not a 50 50 when you're playing against echo so how do you do that that's easier said than done when you're playing up against the m4 world champions when they can both present the echo system and the echo express you have to find that sweet spot where maybe you're the second or third to the top of the food chain and you're able to you know pull a spider-man on the yeah. echo express i don't know how though i don't know it's much easier said than done we in the mpl philippines have yet to figure that out and again, even in MSC, the best of the best from Southeast Asia and some parts of the world come together, I still haven't quite found that formula that can come close to solving the ecosystem. One thing that I really like actually was Sunshine on this Melissa because we definitely saw glimmers of hope just because the, the, the damage output coming in from this Melissa is actually quite large, especially when Echo, they actually do want to want to jumble up together-ish after Yaoi gets an engage. So I kind of feel like they have half of the formula done there yet. Mm -hmm. All they need is to fix it early and mid because we see too much of letting go objectives. And I don't know, like, here's the thing. Sometimes it's smart to let it go, but sometimes you need that, you need that passion in your heart and say, no, that's mine. I agree with you. And here's no, why. Wait. No, I truly agree with you because this is what I was tired of during M4. I was tired of teams taking the step back saying, we can wait this out. We can sacrifice an objective. Our high ground defense is better than them. We can wait like 40 minutes to make something happen. I'm tired of that. And that's why it was so refreshing to see Echo break out of that system saying, no, we want to express this. We want to play through multiple avenues and not just one. We are expedite. We are expedite. Perfect. Literally perfect. I'm going to put away my thesaurus now. <laughs> oh boy. I mean, the, 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 the easiest and fastest way from point A to B is a straight line. Mm -hmm. And exactly, that's yeah. what this lineup is all about. Yeah, right now, looking at Yaoi on playing against Firefox Impunity, I think Firefox Impunity is the dark horse of the MSC because we can't meet them in M4, so we're excited to see, uh, to meet them in MSC. And if they're excited to meet us, we're also excited about meeting them. An exception. Excitation. I mean, Cavus what was that? What was that? What? What? <laughs> They're both excited. They're both excited. Exciteception. I don't know what kind of uh, accent I was putting on there. <laughs> you, you were trying to be Leonardo DiCaprio, weren't you? <laughs> Not gonna lie, I'm disappointed in myself. So let's move on. <laughs> But look, fam famous words coming in from the lover boy himself, the playmaker, right? And again, he's playing against someone like Apex, which is a completely different style to him. But just the same, they have similarities, right? They, they both are capable of playing setup and uh, setup initiator and support type roamers, right? Both of them have an Estes in them somewhere. Uh, Yaoi specifically has a Valir. Uh, you have a. Uh, Apex for example with his Estes, right? With the Turkish Delight. Mm -hmm. They both have a mean Atlas. Both can play a Franco for sure, right? So I understand uh, the excitement from both sides, but something that, that, that tickles me, I don't know if in a good or a bad way, is 
there seem to be so many dark horses in MSC. I think we, um, I'd say de facto lost one already in Phoenix earlier today. Mm -hmm. But so many people say so many things. There's, what, half a dozen dark horses in MSC this year. Yeah, that, I kind of feel like even on the Zodiac, we have a lot of animals. Yo, we, we, we should be utilizing, should be utilizing more of them. Uh, I'm not so sure about that one. Because again, some of these Zodiacs, not so fun to be labeled as. I'm just going to admit that straight off the bat. Because I'm a year of the rat, so I don't think people want to be like, ah, that's the, the hoping dark rabbit. Rat. Oh. The that, hoping rabbit. So that, that, that kind of Zodiac. I was somewhere else. I was star signs, bro. Oh, star signs. Okay, that probably should. That's be. horoscopes. Oh, there that's you horoscopes. go. Yeah. You're, you're such a light Scorpio, bro. <laughs> that actually <laughs> sounds good. Yo, this team is a light Scorpio. <laughs> you know what? This team. I don't know why I thought about. That. Looking at the horoscope, they're totally a Sagittarius. <laughs> I'm a Sagittarius. I'm a Sagittarius. No. Yo, I don't want to be part of this. I'm He's a be... Libra. Look, I am. <laughs> I was going to say, why do you know this? But you guys have been working for the better part of half a decade, yeah. so never mind. <laughs> don't worry, you're part of this. Surumpun, surumpun. Yeah, yeah, we're in sama, sama. Full ah. Malaysian desk. That's talking about zodiacs that... We were talking about dark horse, horses. You yeah, know. No, do you not agree? Do you not agree? I agree there's yeah. so many dark horses. I agree that there's a lot of dark horses, but I totally does that not negate the fact of being a dark horse. <laughs> it doesn't negate the fact of being a dark horse. It's just the fact that most people are seeing fresh new faces, right? And that's the idea. Seeing these international teams, and especially under different names, is going to be labeling them as dark horses, knowing that who knows what could happen. We don't have a guaranteed champion, but we do have a bunch of competitors. Now, now, let's have a look. Oh wait, hold on. Did I hear this correctly? That's right. Jura is going back into the jungler. Uh huh. Jungler well, position. Formerly known as DNZ, he's gonna go back into his comfort, and we're gonna get their formerly XP laner, or their sub XP Lunar, now gonna go in mid. Ooh, how I mean, does this change things up? I mean, I did say if we try the same thing over and over again, and we're hitting a brick wall, we gotta change something. This is a pretty big change. That's insanity. That's in it's insanity if you don't change. That's right, if you keep trying it. But yeah. no, this is impunity. Fireflock's impunity. Mm, uh, Leo, you are on something today. I feel like the ride, you and the riders, they, you'll be passing each other each other. Yeah, whatever you're having, I want it too. Yeah. Well, you, you want to be the GC? <laughs> You want to be in the GC too? Yes! You know, considering what's been coming out today, yes, I do want to be part of that. I feel so out of the loop here. But while the team's getting prepared up on stage, I think we need to keep uh, into consideration here that Pimp most likely is going to go for first pick here. I mean, again, in addition to switching it up no. to the lineup. No? No, I mean, aliens say no. Oh, uh, because okay. we are in the same group, so we will not meet in the playoffs. Oh, no, they're not afraid. Uh, not about the, the, the switch up. Oh, sorry, we'll sorry. I, I thought Alien answered you, man. I, I, I feel bad. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Because you were asking a question, the first thing I saw was no. This is, but this is not a good sign. This is not a good sign that fear is not part of the equation. Yes. Despite them being M4 champions, being the best in the best region in the world right now for MLBB, it's great coming in from Alien, one of their veteran players, and saying, no, we're not afraid. No, this is the beauty afraid. of it, right? M2, M3, how many times did you hear a team be like, oh my god, I absolutely, I admire this team. I, I yeah, hope to fight against them, but also I'm just going to play really, really scared and let them all Starstruck. Exactly, Starstruck Syndrome. I'm sick of that. And it's beautiful to see that here at MSC, everybody has an unreal confidence in themselves to be number one. I mean, you got to go in with a mentality that I am the best. You may be second or third, I kind of don't care, as long as I'm number one. I love that. We've been hearing that from the player uh, interviews, right? Like, yeah. Where they, they, they try to rank each other, they try to rank themselves, and I think that's key. I think that's key. you got to continue that way, because if not, then you're already in a losing position. But it's such a weird spot to be in, right? Because you have to think that you're the best, but at the same time, you got to be willing to work with other people, right? It's, it's such a... It, it, I, I love the idea because you're, it's like you're trying to be two extremes at the same time where you want to be the best. You want to have this ego that you will make the play, but at the same time, you got to trust other people. You got to be like, I'm willing to sacrifice myself for the benefit of the team. Let's get it philosophical. There's a lot of juggling here when it comes to how you look at yourself and how you look at the people around you. That's the Sagittarius thing, by the way. All right. I mean, fair enough, but also keep in mind they're having these philosophical questions being 19 to 18 year olds very early on into their lives. All the while, 
playing video games for their job. Absolutely. In front of thousands of people. <laughs> and then watching their streams, like, okay, maybe they're not that philosophical. <laughs> Right? <laughs> Think about that the next time you want to blast one of our professional players, all right? Agreed. Put agreed. yourselves in their boots and their pants and their secret lab chairs. See if you can do a better job. <laughs> I don't think so. The secret lab chairs is a very big part of it. It yeah. helps. It helps. It helps plenty. Because, plenty. yeah, the training helps with your, with your mechanics, right? With your, uh, what you call it, muscle memory. Yes. But the heart. The heart, the brain, the passion, the bravery. Alien, his top three EXP laners. Isn't isn't that an insight to what we were just talking about? Yeah. Right? He doesn't think of himself as number one. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Or maybe the question is like, besides yeah, you. besides yourself. Besides yourself. I'm, right? gonna go, I'm gonna go find the alien later. Arms, DM him on Instagram and say, hey, where were you in your one to twelve as XP laners? Let's just assume Freddy was like, okay, besides yourself. I don't know, I'm gonna find out. All right. I want to know the answer. You want to know too? I want to know the answer to that. This is an EXP lane issue. Supports can stay out of this. Yeah. The, every other role, but here's the thing, right? I kind of feel like putting yourself at number one, and the moment someone asks you, "What about Sanford?" and you're like, oh, "I mean, he's good, I guess." Is that not also just a valid way of approaching the question? All right. Except for Sanford, who's <laughs> <laughs> He's on top of the world right now. <laughs> truly, truly he is. I want to pull this back a little bit, right? I'm wondering what's going on in Coach Tic Tac's mind. Like, what really rattles him, right? Did that previous game rattle? I was like, whoa, they actually have studied our behaviors. Do we need to change this up for ourselves? Or because sticking to the standard is something that might not necessarily work out for them a second time. Uh, me being the closest to what we could call a Tic Tac expert on the desk, uh -huh. I'd like to think... It still humbled him. Uh, he's one of the most humble men I've ever met in my entire life, still being an MPL champion, an M4 world champion. I'm sure that what Fireflux and Beauty put on the table here in game one still made him think. He still looked at Coach, Stick, uh, Coach Trevor and said, I was pretty good. All right, I'm going to put you in the hot seat. All, All right. right, top three most humble people you've ever met. Oh, wow. Uh, right now, rankings are difficult. Very difficult. Uh -huh. am, I, am I part of this ranking? I'm so for yourself. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm putting myself number one. I'm putting myself number one. I've never met anyone more humble than me. I'm but so now, humble. I'm, I'm humble by the fact that we're going into the draft of game number two, possibly the last game of the day. Echo going up against Fire plus Impunity. All right, let's get right into this. I'm looking for two heroes, two very specific heroes here. I'm wanting to see that new Atlas skin, and I want to see Alpha. Like, come on, somebody's got to do it. Wow! We're seeing that Firefox community wanted to stay on second wow. pick. All right, it's not as ridiculous given the lineup switch. Maybe with this Lunar mid, they want to stay second. They want to be able to get a two-pick swing in that close-up in the last phase. <laughs> and Lancelot Bando, we gotta talk about that because honestly, a lot of casters that I've been talking about, they've been saying Lancelot is one of those heroes that is very oppressive, especially around the mid where you, you can deal a lot of damage to, to, I would say, low mobility mid laners. And now, even Sanji Zero has been banned, but that has let go to 1-1. That is ridiculous. I don't know. Teams that decide, you know what? I'm a, let's challenge it. Let's give them. Let's give them the wall on. Let's see what's going to happen. And half the time, it's a crossbow of tank to three different people, all of them dying, and a quick sweep afterwards. Dude, I, I was looking at the one one's eyes, and it's crazy. I was going to talk about the Kaja. <laughs> you got mesmerized. Yaoi himself took the Kaja away. So now. Oh wow! Okay, they they're prepared. This is an interaction. They're prepared. This is an interaction I'm excited for. Given the nerfs on one one plus the buffs on Fovius, that DF is gonna come out much much faster. I mean, there's a lot of arguments to be made. Like I'm taking it straight from Miracle's mouth, right? Most people would agree that yes, this is going to be the natural counter. Every single time one one auto attacks, she hops, and when she hops, immediately you're going to see the demonic force come straight out of Fovius. But then there's a counter argument of yeah, Fovius can close the distance, but that makes him that much more vulnerable for his weakness once to proc an early crossbow of tank. The thing is. The selection was way too fast. It kind of felt like they predicted for all of this to happen. They let the one one through. They let the one one through. They they learned the behaviors. If the one one is open, they're gonna take the bait. They're gonna want it. Looking at the players' faces right now, even they're like, okay, so far everything is going according to plan. Now what's the next step? They ban out the Eve. They ban out the Valentina. In fact. 
four bands onto Sanji. Big respect to the mid laner of Echo. All right, are they not doing the same thing? I mean, not the same thing, but they're now gimping half of the San San. No, earlier it was Sanford. This time it's Sanji. How deep does this young man have to dig into his hero pool? What are we gonna see here from Sanji? Well, I, it does come at a cost, right? Because at the end of the day, it is going to be both Arlet as well as the Fovius on FIMP's side. And again, I'm expecting this Arlet to be in the support position, but who knows at this point, right? Grammy the Parks out here? Is that's what's going on? Because oh, wait, 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 wait. not a lot is, is open still. Oh yeah, no. We, we reacted so hard and so fast to the uh, Fovius pickup, but yes, the, the Arla. Oh wait, yeah. Wait, 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 what is this? Apex, Apex. Oh wait, 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 wait. Yeah, uh, mid Fovius. Mid Fovius. All right. Well, yeah. I've seen it before. I've In seen recent it years, yes, mid Fovius has become a thing. I've seen things as crazy as oh. jungle Fovius, but yes, I think this confirms it. Apex Minotaur. So mid, 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 mid phobias, mid -phobias. Right? Right. Man, I was thinking, okay, yeah, you already got the phobias, you have the Harlot. The Harlot is like the insurance policy to make sure that this Wawa doesn't get to go around for free. But the fact is, they've even doubled up upon it. You know what? We need premium insurance plus with the Minotaur as well. Win or lose, this draft is very interesting. Yeah. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to see how this goes, but not enough damage just yet. I'm looking at this draft. They need a damage uh, jungler here. And they're going for the Amon. The Amon deals a lot of damage. It's not going to be easy for Benny Cutie. It's not going to be easy. They're looking to quell the storm here. I'm loving the draft. I'm, I'm going Fire Flux Impunity. You did already. <laughs> oh, I did. I'm sorry. I forgot. Before the series started. No, but yes, fundamentally, theoretically, on, on, a, on the scale of just how kits work and interact with each other, I like this draft. I like this draft as well, but I'm curious to see what the battle spells are going to be from both sides. I expect for Fireflux Impunity to be greedy with this. Take flickers. You need to be able to make this play. And from the side of Echo, it's a little 50 50. Are they going to be greedy with flickers for themselves, or are they immediately going to go for the purifier? Because I feel like either way, it really kind of doesn't matter. It's all about positioning, and Sanji might be the big player for Echo this time around. Game number two going in. An amazing draft. Changing up the lineups. Having the Phobius. Having the Amon. How, is, how are they going to fare up going up against Echo? Game number two, who's going to take the win? Are we going to extend to all three games for tonight? Well, let's find out as we jump right into the land of Dawn. Echo on blue side versus Fire Flux Impunity on the red side. Looking at the battle spells here, rather interesting. But yes, they're doing it all over again. Echo, check them out. Yeah, looking at the situation, Carl is going to solo the purple, while Benny Cutie, as well as Yao Ye, was starting the orange oh. buff. So this is going to be a very fast clear here for Carl Tease. They call him fast clear, Magia. Yeah, under a minute, he's able to take both buffs, totally ignore the small caps, and go straight for the little wonder. Are you level 3, man? Look at that, they can't keep up with this, and especially when you are playing a mod, you're naturally going to be slower. He did take Mystery Shop, he's not going to try and go out of his bounds, he needs his items more than anything else. Yeah, I would argue that he wants his items more than he wants levels. Looking at the situation right now, um, Kira, level 3, and right now Carl TZ also level 3, about to get level 4, in-game equipment, he is going for the Steel Lake Plates again. Very interesting. It does seem like he wants to be able to tank the damage coming in from Sunshine in the early stages of the game. Fair enough, fair enough. Alien and he himself decides to go for the tenacity, making sure that he is just tanky enough to be that bot, uh, that stun bot, right? To stick on to the right targets. But all of it, this composition that we're seeing from uh, Firefox Security is to really punish Benny QT, which begs the question, right? Who's going to take care of Sunshine? Oh! Yura walks in, oh. finds a kill on Sanji, barely survives. I was just gonna say, I was gonna say, buying pants early, does that not show respect for Amon's Yura? No, Yura's Amon. Yeah, man. Here's the thing because. Early survives. I was just gonna say, I was gonna say, buying pants early, does that not show respect for Amon's Yura? No, Yura's Amon. Yeah, man. Here's the thing because he deals magic damage, so I'm thinking like. Maybe not. I'm thinking a magic rope would be a little bit better, but now right. looking at the situation, Alien taking quite a bit of damage, and Echo takes that as a sign like we can go for this. No one's gonna stop us. Look at this preemptive Black Dragon form patrolling this turtle pit. Quick turtle take here for Echo. Yeah, beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff coming out from Echo as always, but. 
Again, when you're looking at Friday Plus Infinity, their main game plan is not for these side objectives. They want kills. They are looking for people, not just neutral objectives. Apex 47 now, level 4. Carl Teasy finds oh. Lunar. Taunts onto 2. Oh, watch yeah. Kura! Gets a few snaps onto Carl Teasy. He survives, forcing out a fair death strike. Down goes the goat. Kura gets a kill. Join first blood. Beautiful, but down on bottom side. Oh, oh. sunshine. He has no backup here. Yeah. Apex. Oh, they're so far off. They're really far off, but first blood's already achieved. I just love these off tempo plays coming up from Fire Blocks and Beauty. That's the main goal. If you're not playing the traditional style you're looking to find the holes in this golden standard that echo has set in place it's almost like game number one let's see what they're going to do now that we see what they're going to do we gotta see what's going on because converting exp to the mid lane originally and exp later lunar will be playing as a mid laner replacing rosa and the thing is i gotta feel like let's just play four strength what are you good at fighters well, that's a bit awkward, but we're gonna roll with it anyways. I yeah, know, isn't this the next best thing to a compromise? Oh, wait, down bottom, Kyle Deasy. Kyle's gonna beat out of Sunshine. Here comes Yali, the Playmaker, gets a Facebook land, but Sanji takes down the marksman before anything is said. Cue a very low. Here comes Alien, supporting his jungler, using that Amon's kit to try and heal up. Wants to get the kill. Sanford's still alive. Alien can get his man. Yeah, unfortunate. Unfortunate indeed, but he wants to try and cancel Sanford's. Wow. Sanford, nerves of steel just stood there. Nah, you're not gonna do it. Try me. I know Tipos. Tipos. I'm number one. <laughs> number two, three, and, and above. You guys can't, can't do anything to me. Right, right now, Sunshine is just clearing his minions in terms of goalie, not as much as the early oh. game, and Sanford gets pulled back. Early final slash here, trying to go for the outplay, and Sanford falls. Alien gets the kill. Down goes Kura. Sanji and Yowie gets the pull. DJ taken down, Alien. There's another fight here near the turtle pit. God, he gets the final appraiser's wrath, but here comes the DF from Lunar. Ben Beauty looking to take the skies. Couple so more Venus boys. Here comes the DF. Pow! One more pow! He's the one who goes down. Benny Cutie gets a kill. Yep, he had no choice. He had to use it. He already used his Purify at the same time. They were so close to taking out Carl TZ, but just so far as he manages to walk away with just a sliver of health. Now keep in mind that Fire Flux and Unity, Kira should be okay here, right? No. no. Gets a passive on it. No! And oh, he went back strike. in. Pops him. And Carl TZ gets a turtle there. Fire Flux overstayed their welcome. That's a little unfortunate. They gotta keep playing for these off tempo plays, right? They gotta keep in mind don't fall into the same habits don't listen to the traditional rules of mobile legends we're expecting these fights to happen around the turtle but that's not the main goal at the end of the day they're trying to shut down benny qt and if they don't shut him down or at least build up a lead enough to make it happen then you have to take a step back i gotta see the interaction between the items as well yeah he's going oh, in no, there's a flicker plus a pull on the big cow and lunar takes to the skies but wait can he take on benny qt before he's the one who does so and there's the crossbow tang! Benny Cutie takes out another double kill! Make it a triple! Oh, oh, oh no! Sunshine gets him down! He does eventually get the 3k! But that's a shutdown! Big money over to Fim, but Echo wins the trade! I gotta say, early trades here, Echo, they're like, okay, you guys wanna fight? We're not running away, we can fight! Sanji right now, I kind of feel like in MSC we haven't seen a lot of Farsas, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have forgotten the amount of damage that a Farsa can pull up, and then you're like, oh wait, now I remember, now I remember. But now, one of the problem is, Carl Kizzy, early item, the Steel Lake Plates, so far, has been playing in this. Whoa, Rogue Black Dragon coming in from oh. the west. Tries to get his man, there's the Petrify. Kura still alive, healing up, and they disengage. Whoa, that was, oh, that just happened. I, I'm not really surprised that Echo decided to make that call. They've got to temper themselves here, right? They cannot fall into their bloodlust. They cannot go skull for the skull god as they usually do, especially when it's the right place, right time. Because remember, Fim, they got to play off tempo. And if they can, again, hit Echo at their heels, right at their ankles, tilt them off Keter just enough, that could be the opening that they're looking for, right? Again, Sanji has been playing a very disciplined game, but Sanford, he's got to calm down a little. Two Radiant Armor so far, I'm smelling a third coming up for Sanford, and this does well, not only against the Amon, but as well 
as the bold is. So right now they really gotta go over for Sunshine to really deal the damage because I'm feeling they're about to beat their silly soon. Oh, there's a ball on the alien. Oh, he does oh, his oh. dashes in, and that's a double kill for Sunshine. Alien very low, can Ben Huey get the kill? Not gonna go ahead and take to the skies. Oh, amazing response what? by Firefox. Beautiful fight coming in from Apex. He literally hops over the uh, over the turtle pit, flickers in and using the Minoan Fury and catches all three. A great response, but how did he convert? Oh, Black Dragon 4 by Sanford. Helping Carl needs to secure this turtle. But Lunar to the rescue. Oh, oh. this is in retribution. Kura gets it. And right now looking at the situation. It is a very good trade. Carl Teasy is a little bit angry. He wants to go forward. Oh, Prazer's Wrath. Not enough damage under the two that got hit. Alien and Lunar forced the back out. There's a Feathered Air Strike. Carl Teasy still wants more. That's a clear disengage and a push down the bottom. Woo! Everything that's been happening so far, it's great to see that this time, Fireflux and Impunity are saying, you know what? Disrespect the space as much as you can. Make Echo tilt. Make them go for that first move. If Sanford tries to go for that Black Dragon form, we can pull back because getting in and out of the fight isn't that difficult for our particular composition. Like, personally, I would have imagined that Gushin was going to be the play for Kira instead of the Amon. But the movement speed and the camouflage has helped him out. Oh, there's a pull on the Apex. Can he survive? He does, but only for a second longer. Oh, Benny QT Airlines gets 2K once more. 6 1 and 0 oh, on this 1 1. Kura is standing by. But the thing is, Sanji, Yaoi, Benny Cutie really preventing Firefox and Beauty from really doing whatever oh. they want. Benny Cutie is taking quite a lot of damage, but we gotta look at Yaoi. Every single time an attempt happens onto either Sanji or onto Benny Cutie, it will be denied by Yaoi. So they really got to make sure whoever they're, they're targeting for, Yaoi cannot be there. The problem is, Yaoi's everywhere. He's literally everywhere. He always has his divine judgment in the most convenient of places you would almost feel if you are part of the Turkish squad. But more importantly, I think that at the end of the day, it's all going to come down to that high ground defense, right? Echo, they're building up the lead like we saw previously. Not as much and not as devastating as game number one, but definitely a lot more even. Right now, Echo, they're pushing up top. And again, Yaoi is just everywhere. What are they looking for right now? Because they have two ways to engage the fight. The Minotaur as well as the Arlen. But every single time they initiate, something goes wrong. Either Yaoi is there, Sanford is there. They gotta make sure. Right now, Yaoi can steal. Who is gonna find? Let's spot it out. They don't see Apex. This place. They don't see Sanford. Sunshine making the most of this. Just boy. Oh, they don't no. see Sanford. They don't no. know. They don't know this is deep. Oh, Yowie, get over here. Gets a pull on the alien. Here comes Apex. Oh, Splinter's in. And there's the answer. Benny Cutie goes down. Oh, but straight enough for Sunshine. They're still going. Lunar takes on Carl Deasy. That's a Matematic for Pimp. Double kill for Lunar. Yo, what? EF going in. Yowie gets his immortality. Still intact. And that's a trade. Three for one. He did. I, I, I could have sworn that was Echo. Yeah. What happened? Suddenly... Right now, Firefox and Beauty, they're the one that wanted to fight. What happened? Come on. What? We got to pull out that replay. So many things happen at once. The canceling of the Feathered Airstrike, the kill onto Benny QT. All of it happening at almost the exact same time. Let's pull up the replay one more time and break it down. Because first of all, we see the initial capture. We keep your eyes on Benny QT. He gets a little too close. and gets caught up in the big play from Apex. And immediately the follow-up from Lunar, uh, Lunar to get into the middle of that fight, making it basically impossible. Like Call TZ as well as Bernie QT, almost dying at the same time. This is what we were building up to, right? Mm -hmm. We were talking about how Fireflux and Punity, their lineup is amazing at re-engages. Despite Sanford's amazing pincer maneuver, you, you can't beat the fact that there were two or three big ticket ults that Fireflux were holding onto. And that's what led to this big win for them. They're now ahead a thousand gold. Right now, Sanford up top. Make sure that he can clear the wave. Sunshine really wants this turret 
and looks like gonna get really close. Carl Beasy is there to help Sanford. It looks like for now he's not able to defend the top turret. The Lord is marching bottom. Oh. Alien pulls in Carl Beasy, but Carl Beasy is able to survive, especially having that radiant armor. Can handle the damage coming in from Amon. Yeah, takes the damage. More importantly, they get a majority of the outer turrets, and that's the best that Fireflux Imperial can get. This is their very first Lord, right? It's not that strong, you're not expecting too much from it, but now, how do they turn this around and get aggressive? How do they set up this situation again? Well, Carl Teasy is moving forward, Apex 47 taunted, and the thing that I like about the fight is the fact that Kira and Alien, they understand that they could kite out of the way and engage back in. Their real trouble is Sanji when it comes to damage, because Venkiri, yes, does quite a lot of damage, but I kind of feel like, leave that to Kira, he can handle that. The rest, you gotta shut down Sanji. Let's not forget about some of the smaller synergies between the heroes from the side of Fireflux. Like Sunshine, especially with Bennett's Rage, with the Minoan Fury, and arguably even with the final slash. You think you're out of it? Nope. You get sweeped back into such a high damage all. And let's not forget, it doesn't have to be Bennett's Rage. It could be the viewer's passion as well. Looking at the items as well, in terms of damage, I think Ben Cutie is going for that Malefic Roar because the front line coming in from Fireflux Infinity is getting just a little bit annoying because look, actually it's surprising. Looking at the Phobias, not really doing any defensive items, going straight on damage. Nope, uh, this is what they want. They want some representation of burst because, again, consider the new buff on a Minotaur, right? The almost genius wand esque effect of his passive, wherein every time he hits someone with a skill, it lowers their physical and magic defense. So I get it. They want both DPS and DOT. Let's not forget about also the fact that he gives adaptive armor or, well, or magic resist, depending on the situation. And that's the beauty of it. It allows Lunar to actually get deep into that fight. Let's not forget that CCs, especially if they displace an opponent or arguably even a knockup, procs the demonic force. You already hear the grumblings of the Lord. Already on the map. It looks like Fireflux, Infinity, they're all here except for Kura, which is on the top side of the map, but coming back down. He should be seeing Sanford, but I kind of feel like Sanford's seeing him first. No, they both see each other. Yaoi goes in. Will he get Sunshine? Oh, flickers in, spent, and he's going to get welcomed in by Apex and Alien. Look at this. Lunar very low. Forced to use the Winter Truncheon. That's a pickoff. For Echo, that's 5v4 now. I wonder, is there going to be a steal in our near future? Watch Kyura, watch Carl Tizi, look at the Lord. And that's Kyura feeling it away! They take down Benny Cutie as well, plus a massive Vino on Fury by Apex 47. And now Yaoi, the playmaker, trying to take it down, but he's going to go down as well. Alongside what? Carl Tizi, it's just Sanji here. They no! will kill poor Kyura. Say his name, DND. Oh my god. You guys feel it? You guys feel the third game? The ties are changing. You guys feel it? I'm feeling the third game here. It is coming. We all want it. It's going to happen. And now they're looking to go for the end. Dude, right now, only Sanji is alive. Alien is tanking it. Final Sanji is pulled back. He goes down. What's the base? What's the base? Five blocks of Unity. Take a game from Echo. The world champion suffered their defeat here, now it's equalized. One to one. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a series on our hands. Oh my goodness. I'm at a loss for words. What a great play coming out for Firefox Community. What an amazing attempt from Echo's side. Just one misplay. Just unfortunately, Benny QT using his own inbuilt purify a little too early. I would almost want to see. It is a misplay short. But I kind of feel like this is an, this is an outfit. It really is. I mean, the draft alone, that is something to marvel at. It's very courageous, man. It's, it's very brave of you to actually go outside of the bounds of the meta. We haven't seen Phobias for a while. We haven't seen Amon for a while. The fact that they're like, these heroes are good. I don't care what the meta says. We can adjust. And again, I love the bravery, I love the adjustment, I love the creativity. But again, this is just game number two, the equalizer. We're gonna see game number three. If they can, if they can take down Echo, this is a game changer. They needed Cure in the jungle. They just needed mm -hmm. Cure in the jungle. And I think they found, they found the perfect spot in the ecosystem. They understand that, no, 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 we're not prey. 
we are also predators. It's disgusting. It's disgusting how well this team played. It's disgusting how Echo responded to it at the same time. The consistent adaptations from both sides were impeccable. But at the end of the day, whoever presses the button first loses out. And in this case, Benny QT did not press it in time. But with that being said, right, how could he possibly have outplayed that? With so much CC and only one ability that purifies one CC at a time, Final Slash, no Fury, as well as just even if all else fails, Amon walks up, presses his ult, here, take this, you're below 50% HP, you're gone. I think we're gonna have to take our time because there's a lot to analyze here. We gotta go step by step. But we're gonna go in backwards because the final engage, Yaoi with the conceal, unable to get Sunshine. And it's not just this game. In the previous game as well, we see that Yaoi tries to catch Sunshine and Sunshine could see the future. He has the Sharingan. He know that it's gonna happen. He was able to deny it. And then overall just capitalize over it. I think this is one of those things where you're like, you're starting to show your hand a little bit too much. Is that a problem here? I wouldn't say showing your hand too much. I think this is a lot of just pre-preparation for Echo, right? And we're finally getting to see it for the very first time. The question is, really, who is going to be the MVP of this match? Because a majority of the members from Fireflux and Punity played out of their minds. Yeah, speaking of playing out of their minds, the MVP for this game, Apex 47, 0, 2, and 1. Ladies and gentlemen, don't look at the KDA. Look at what this man did for his entire team. The team is looking at the MVP and they're like, yo, you know what? MNC, you guys know what's up. If anything, this is the best kind of MVP. Where it's the, the numbers best. don't explain it, right? It, it forces you to watch the game. And folks, if you do watch the game, you're doing it right. Check out what Apex 47 was able, able to do against the world champions. Against Yaoi, he outspaced them, outpositioned them, and caught a majority of Echo in his Minoan Fury more than once. Like I'd say there were two or three big tickets. Minotaur and Fury's here. Might I say, even if he's not the top of the standings, I think Minotaur is back. Yeah, I think Minotaur is back too. The way that he's utilizing the time, the fact that it's three hits, and the final hit is going to be that big knockup, and especially since you can fake people out, <laughs> you, you can go in on the second beat thinking, oh, I'm gonna flicker in early, and everyone's gonna think that's gonna be the final beat. So they all use their abilities, and guess what? It's too late to get knocked up, and let's look at it all over again, because this was the very beginning of it. Dude, looking at the highlights, it's really not as close as we thought it was. Uh, because again, in the early stages of the game, actually Fire Flux ability, they started a lot of the fights. And I kind of like watching how Sunshine is playing the game. But look at Apex oh, 47. Wow. He engages and he disengages. He has to engage. He has to feel. He is the difference maker because he is causing a lot of problems and also a lot of space for his own team. Problems for Echo, space for his own team. I don't want people to think he's, he's <laughs> giving so problems to his own team. Just to clear it out. Here yeah, we go. Just clear it up, yeah. Watch this. Oh! Dude, the Cura as well, man. We gotta give him a shout out. Yeah. The kills, the retributions. It's amazing. That's right. No, Apex 47 is the perfect example of a setup MVP. He set up everything for Sunshine, everything for Apex, and yeah, again, we're talking about pressing buttons. Lunar, he just had to go DF as soon as those dudes started moving around. Yeah, I'm just surprised that he was able to hit that retribution. There was just so much chaos in there, and especially with the knockup, it actually blocks the Lord's health bar in its entirety. So it's like you're you're making a little bit of a guess, and you're predicting when exactly you're going to do it. But this game ends at one of the most symmetrical games I've ever seen. Kill score of 13-13, game time of 15-15. Make a wish. Looking at the KDA, can we really say Echo did a lot of mistakes? 6-3-1, Ben Cutie. 5-2-7, uh, and seven, Sanji. 1-2-8, and eight, Yaoi. Carl Gizzi, not the greatest Sanford as well. Wait, first loss? In a while, yeah. In a while, yeah. What Blacklist International what? could not solve, Fireflux and Punity did in the group stages of MSC. So the baby... The junior blacklist is now stepping up. I don't know, but by hook or by crook, they have done it. I don't know how, but yeah, in all of MPL Philippines Season 11 playoffs, blacklist and Echo have not met. And then come the grand finals, M4 Deja Vu. But here, <laughs> game two, this is this is insane, truly insane. We gotta watch more MTC these days, man. What exactly built these guys to this point? How did they, more importantly, how did they come up with this? Just gotta say, graphics were a little bit missing. It's 0, 2, and 11. That makes not much more sense. But yeah. Again, look there at you go. That, that thing, we were missing one digit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know. 0 to 11 then. 
looking at the game, I kind of feel like this is one of those things where MSE, people say it's for Southeast Asia region. Now they're looking at it, it's like, yo, the next king of Southeast Asia might not necessarily come from Southeast Asia. All right, maybe too soon to tell, soon. but this is, this is a great step forward in changing the dynamics this of the power uh, rankings in MSE. For now, you guys must be seeing, this is a bit of an overreaction, but this just show how big of a deal it is for you to take one game off of the world champions. Because again, it's not the end of the series. Let me remind everyone here. Mm -hmm. But again, having this one win, it does change. It does shift quite a lot in the atmosphere here in the in the arena yeah the, the status quo has changed definitely. right right before this we we're hearing a lot of shouts we we're hearing a lot of the rumbling especially oh game number one call tz gonna get a signature pick on that lancelot instant rumbling on that stage this almost dead silent as yeah. soon as uh, as Vim was able to close out that game and the roar afterwards what a turnaround Pikachu meme face. Pikachu meme face. That's what happened. <laughs> I love that. At 15 to 15, Pikachu meme face. Oh. Oh, for, for those who don't know, it's... It's that one. I gotta say, man, for all of you at home, all the folks watching MSE 23 Tree right now, we're in for a treat. Game number three, I don't know why, my brain is saying one thing. I think something is whispering to me. What is it? The next game, Echo might explode. They might end it quick. They have to. Again, that's one way to reset. You just show the world that, hey, game two was a show, yes, but back to reality. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think even for Coach Tic Tac it's, uh, himself, right? We were, I mentioned this earlier, like how would he feel after? It's like, yes, he's a humble person. Yes, it's like, wow, that was pretty good. After this, all the more. it's all like, whoa, hold the phone. We got to talk about this one more time because, again, <laughs> the research that has been put through, the extensive research in a matter of fact, because that draft happened so quickly. That first phase, boom, boom, boom. Each and every time they knew exactly what they wanted. This has been pre-planned since the very beginning. A conspiracy, in a matter of fact. They practiced this draft yesterday. It might literally be just yesterday. <laughs> that, and they also practiced it back all the way in Turkey. Because it could happen, because again, they knew that Echo was going to be in their group for weeks now, right? And speaking of which, I need to manage my uh, guest coins. I, this, this changes things. <laughs> this definitely <laughs> changes things. <laughs> Dude, so sorry for Get everyone. Fast, by the way. So sorry for everyone with your guest coins. I think a lot of people voted for this to be a 2-0. Oh yeah. <sighs> Welcome to MSC. Can you imagine all the Turkish fans that decided to go for a game <laughs> to win for Fireflux Impunity? How much of a conversion that would have been? The odds between all the, the stonks, two? All the stonks. All oh. the more makes it easier for you to get your uh, Triumphant Eagle Leomord skin in case you missed out on it. Or uh, the, the, the Claude skin too. I'm excited man. I'm, th 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 this, this spices things up. Most def. This spices things up because again, let's put ourselves in the position of a coach. Coach Tita, you were talking about him. Yep. How would you respond seeing an Arlith and then seeing a Phobius? Quick snaps! Just picked up, no fear. Nope. Showing like, yeah, we don't care. So that makes this all the more a conversation yeah. to highlight Coach Bad Joseph, Coach Osprey, right? This is, this is amazing! <laughs> From a country that has no MPL, taken down the world champion it's ridiculous it truly is ridiculous and i think here this is going to be one of the few times coach tic tac is going to look at the rest of the team it's like guys i need you to quiet down get ready for me to call you when necessary because we're going to look to counter draft this we cannot have these set plays because these guys have figured out the playbook yeah no and you can see it in the face of coach treb as well Tick, let's do it all right we're gonna do this right we gotta do this right this time we are not gonna fall into the pit trap Reminding myself again, Burning Splash going up against Onyx, very close game. Evil Sledges going up against uh, Phoenix, very close game. That's right. Now looking at this, Echo, it does give me the impression no team is safe. My personal tagline, there is absolutely no absolutes. And we haven't even seen Blacklist play. Yeah, that's the worst part. We haven't seen other powerhouses come and rumble just yet. Not even outplayed even. That's right. No blacklist yet, no outplay, and a lot of people have stocks in both of them. I do, personally. Dude, 
This is. They're both in my top four, five. <laughs> oh man, my power rank. Is my six. best points. <laughs> Because again, looking looking at, at the situation, this is what I love. And people keep... I, the thing that I like in terms of the patch is, right? I'm hearing less and less complain about the meta. The only thing is like, yo, we want, we want the assassins back into the jungle. But other than that, right? Other than that, this shows how equal things have been. Just because you're at the top, that's the problem about being at the top. You only have one more direction to go. Yeah. And it's going down. Yeah. But it also does say that maybe some of the teams that we've been kind of like questioning about their standard place, their unorthodox side, maybe they're just ahead of their time. Oh yeah, perhaps. Oh, In a man. sense, they're here hiding quite a lot and other teams, now they're like, okay, we gotta take this seriously, but let's move the conversation over to game number three, the final game of the day. We're looking at all the players they're sitting down and looking at the the facial expressions, it's a bit lighter for Fireflux and Goody. And now we're looking at Echo, almost the exact opposite. They're like, we haven't been this serious for a while. Yeah. We gotta do this. Yeah, look at the pout on 40 and look at Carl D slumped over. I'm sure they also can't believe what just happened. Because again, that last team fight, the, the, the last I'd say minute or two of game two was like falling in love. It was slow, but also just quick at the same time. Ah, that was a very poetic way of putting it. Fault in our stars. <laughs> I wish I could take credit. Yes, yes. I appreciate it. If you just stayed silent, I, I wouldn't know. No, I would have called him out. I was about to call him out oh, on it. I totally yeah. dropped, dropped, dropped <laughs> me in it. And then I was like, okay, fair enough, fair enough. You got you beat me to it as always. Well, Master of Lore here on our side. <laughs> what does it say about me? I've never seen that show. <laughs> oh, it's not a show. It's it's a book. Book. Uh, well, I mean, there is a, I mean, there is a movie about it as oh. well. But it doesn't do it as much justice. But the, at the end of the day, don't spoil it, him. Chat, don't, don't you dare. It? Don't, don't you dare. Is it really a good movie? It's pretty good. Pretty decent. Yeah. Is it like an action kind of thing? Uh, sure. Yeah. Some might even call it a comedy. Uh. Really? Oh. It's really dark comedy if you think about it. Oh wow! Okay, now now you got me hooked. Okay, great. Go check it check it out later. Chat, do not, don't you dare spoil it for him. Now, tell him. as we come back into this game, right? They're gonna be thinking out through and through. Hopefully, oh, the draft is taking a little bit of time here. Hopefully, they get it uh, set it up faster and get this game going because I'm really excited to see how this is going to go. And every time we look at Fireflux and Unity, the air is just so different around them. The momentum is on their side, and yeah. it's funny to associate the Turkish teams with momentum because they play so cool, calm, and collected. It's crazy, right? Their carbon monoxide hits different. <laughs> the, the, yes, we have the we have to change the atmosphere. Yeah. The carbon monoxide, the poisonous gas. Oh wait, sorry, dioxide. Carbon dioxide. <laughs> carbon dioxide. Yes. Carbon dioxide. Yes. 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 It's, just... it's what they breathe out. And here you see Apex 47. Dude, it's 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 827. He's all smiles. In Phnom Penh, Cambodia. <laughs> My carbon dioxide is hitting different. Okay, Apex 47. <laughs> this is his his uh, comment on the MSC meta. MSC meta is really great. I don't think it's changed a lot. It's pretty similar to M4, but. There's some new heroes which our team utilizes and executes. I don't think we'll face any issues and we'll manage it. Manage it, he did. They did more than just manage it. Yeah, yeah, they really did. They, I, I would like to believe that they have evolved the meta, but there is a level of refinement and there's also I feel, to a certain degree, way too many components to it. It doesn't mean that it's unstoppable. It's just something that Echo was not prepared for. Who would have thought that this would come through? The Minotaur, the Phobius, as well as the Arla. Just so many things in play. At least now they know. I don't think it's going to work a second time. Remember, Diggy, easy counter to this entire composition. Something that you need to keep in mind going into this. Yes, but also consider, despite the Playmaker's, uh, I'd say, deep arsenal and amazing mechanics, I don't see Yaoi as much of a diggy guy, diggy guy, you know what I mean? You know, he might have to, you know, step down from playing this Kaja time day in, day out, right? But because they'll have to draft around it, yes, but when they pulled it off, yeah. it was at the last phase! Dude, I, I gotta agree with Leo here. Can you can you really imagine Yaoi be like... I, I can't even do the sound. Dr. Rooney is my idol! That's the one. That's a lot better than both of us combined. Einstein is my... You're almost there! 
Little bit like <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 this student? You 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 will see it in the, the, the recap of game two draft, right? The Minotaur came in in the last phase and the Kaja was already picked up. Yep. So there really wasn't much that Echo could have done at that point. True, but at least they could be prepared for it this time round. They're not gonna fall into the same bit trap once that's again. Right, and I right. believe that Coach Tic Tac is going to keep this in mind as soon as possible. I'm already seeing the S this man here. That means Echo is gonna be on the same side once again. And they are adamant on breaking Fire Flux Impunity. Right. Hey, you know what? I kind of feel like Fire Flux Impunity, based on what we just saw just now, the last pick kind of favors them quite a lot. It's one of the few compositions, and I would honestly think with a lot of people favoring, uh, favoring the first pick, I'd say, yeah. Oh, 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 my God. Oh, oh. Look at things like he's looking over, it's like, yeah, we bet on your phobias. What are you going to do now? I like Got that. Him. I like <laughs> that, coach. Yeah. I like that. Dude, really, like, like you, you got you to gotta rewind it. Just look at his face. The only way it was bad, he's just looking to the side. It's like, I'm serious now, all right? I don't care. Wawa picked up again. Kadita Ben. This time, no phobias. What are you gonna do? Are they gonna pick up the Kaja early just so that they can fight against this one one or just go with Arlen and be these again? Same, same. I love it. The building blocks continue to almost seem similar. Oh. And we see the Eve this time. They're like, no, right. we're not gonna let this happen. We're not gonna go into the second phase and question it. We're going to show what our comp is all about right now. And you have to answer us, not the other way around. This is going to be very interesting. I think this third pick is really going to show whether Fire Flux Impunity can they handle the yep. draft coming in from Echo or not. Yep. Do they have a substitute to the Phobius? Uh, what else uh, does Lunar hold? Because again, as a former XP laner, subbing in now as their mid, what other fighters in mid can you play, right? It's Sitar. Silvana. 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 Bane. Bane. I don't Dude. know. No, no, I love it actually. Right? But what is it? A different kind of Bane from Carl Thies' Bane yesterday. Yeah, just full mage. Not full mage. We need quiet and rest go for uh, defense, but we can go full mage if we want to. <laughs> okay, it's good and bad. Firm is good against the Kaja because Kaja wants to help someone versus someone out yeah. and he can handle it. But the bad. The Fermis traditionally does not do that well against the, the E. So right now, good and bad. You have you have quite you have answered one of the questions, one of the problems, but now you're kind of putting one problem onto yourself. For me, it's not as great as the first draft in game of two. Yeah. We'll see, we'll see. The second phase is where it gets real interesting, especially for Firefox and Unity, or even Echo in this particular case. I'm looking at Leo and I'm hoping he can answer this, right? Is there an angle for Valentina Jungle here? Uh, Carl Dizzy has been known to play Valentina Jungle I've seen a couple it. times. Yeah. yeah, so I don't know whether it's going to be something that's viable because you can tell that Immunity are making sure of, hey, get rid of the Frederick, get rid of the Ava. So much respect coming from the world champions. No, I get it. Uh, just as important as the Fovius was, Kyurao, the Aemon, was also key. He really was one of the cleanup crew for Firefox Infinity in game two, and that was so that made Ben Cutie's life so difficult. So even even Sanford was was, was uh, put on the edge by Kyurao's Aemon. So yeah, uh, here I'd say the, the fact that Valentina hasn't been picked up nor banned yet, if not here, because again, it's possible by Joseph and Osprey, we know that they do their homework. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a good possibility here. Oh boy. Oh, let's see. Let's see what it's going to be. Next band coming out from the side of oh, Fireflux. Likely lands. Likely lands. Lance already be bad. It's already been bad. Oh, in the okay. First phase. It's uh, very similar to game two. Wow. This land is so much. Not that one. Oh, they're going to pass. Honestly, okay. this does show. It's kind of oh, not great, right? Because here's the thing about a cheese trap <laughs> cheese can expire. Yep. So it, it will happen only once. If you want a win onto Echo, you need a something different kind of cheese. What is blue cheese? Oh, I'm liking blue cheese. They're on the blue side, aren't they? No, no, no. I mean, oh, wait, no. Wait, I mean, it's not blue. entirely wrong. Blue. Oh, yeah. Wait, blue cheese is not blue? It, it it's is. not technically blue, but it does work with molds. Ah, okay. Wait, what? Yep. It's, it, we'll explain later. Okay. Are we gonna pretend that like you didn't have an accent just now? Yeah, well, oh, we, for now, no, for now. We'll address it later, we'll address okay. it later. All right, move along while we wait for, um, still no roamer, still no jungler, clear for Finn. Yeah, they're really maximizing their time here. Ezreal. Wow. Wait! Wow. 
What? Uh, are you thinking it's maybe it for some reason? Probably not, probably not. But oh, we've seen it before. Yeah. But that means Apex will have to play the Faramis. Right? Not the worst thing in the world, because again, Faramis doesn't do that well. Personally, I prefer damage on the Faramis. This is so odd, they're pre-picking Esmeralda with not much shield except for the Eve. I agree, I agree with the Leo 100%, right? It feels really, really awkward, like the Esmeralda in this matchup alone, there's so many things that can just blow her out of the water, so why pick it this early on and not save it for the very end? If not, they could have been looking to either secure the mid laner other than the Faramis and put it into support position or lock in their jungler, which I was hoping to see. So so in this case, it's straightforward for Echo. It's like, okay, I'm gonna get the Akai. I am also going to get the use on that's no problem, unless Firefox and Unity decide, you know what? We're switching things up. You know what's a cheese here? A Valir. Quite a lot of engage here. Pushing people away. Very dive. Mm, Very dive. Save for the Eve, yeah. Yeah, because again, we don't know where this Esmeralda is going. Esmeralda will skill pretty well come late game. And we've seen uh, Firefox and Unity doing quite well coming back from a dire situation so honestly putting the Esmeralda anywhere mid EXP I think can work we don't know where three of them are going they don't know where the farm is going or the Arlo's going Granger so greedy so dangerous. very very greedy big and Granger like it's 2021 that's the semi going to the jungle right yeah it's probably it's definitely gonna go into the jungle but why pick it in, into the Utah why pick it into the gacha? Why pick it in? Well, I, I can understand Wamwan, especially if you have a level He's even more out range by the Eve. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's interesting. Maybe, maybe they're thinking, you know what? I'm gonna look for the Death Sonata, and then hopefully we get Esmeralda to jump on top of her and finish her off. Maybe that's the idea. This feels like a horror movie where I want to be, I want to get jump scared. I want to be surprised. I'm not gonna have any opinions for this game. I just want things to happen. I want to shut my brain off and I want to enjoy myself. So Not that way. Just a, just a peek into the psyche of one LaFell. <laughs> Interesting. No, but wait, real quick. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, fellas, but the last time we saw a Granger with some modicum of success was in the hands of the Burmese Python can from M4. Yep. And then oh, prior, a bit. prior to that, maybe in some games from Wise, Black International. That's it. In, in recent history, that's it. Yep. That's all we have to work off of. But Guess what, everybody? We're here. This is the final game of the best of three between Echo against Firefox Impunity. Me and Esmeralda? No way! Let's go. <laughs> this makes me so mad. This I'm not. Makes me so mad. I'm not. I'm, I'm happy. Mad, you... happy, confused. <laughs> like, like, what are you hoping to achieve? You're just gonna get farmed in the mid lane. Don't or... achieve anything then. <sighs> I'd be looking at this. Look, look at how much it is. No, I mean, like, if you can't achieve anything, then don't. You know, just just wait for your friends to do something. Right now, Lunar oh. is getting harassed quite a little bit, but so far, it's arriving quite well. They're delaying Kyoto's purple here. This is so difficult. Not much Apex 47 can do as well. They pull it into the bush, taking it out of the vision of Echo. Alien here losing this duel. It's so hard to achieve anything, as you guys said. Yeah. I mean, this early game is not going to go in favor of, of Fireflux, and I, I think that's very obvious, but the question is, what are they going to do towards the mid and especially towards the later stages of the game? I'm ready to be surprised. I'm ready to be proven wrong, and more importantly, these the Turkish Delight, they've got a couple of weird flavors here. I'm not going to lie. It's not for everybody. Right now, looking at the items, especially the goal leaners, neither of them are building steel leg plates. They really just want to get their damage as fast as possible. So, I'm kind of feeling if any kind of attention has been brought to the goal lean, someone should die. Something I'm looking forward to. I think it's going to be a standard early game here. Both sides not making any mistakes. It's like very traditional pathing. They're going to make their way down towards the bottom half of the map and maybe make something happen. But even then, level 4 hasn't been achieved by either Lunar or even Apex. Oh! Yowie here spots Cura trying to commit. Grand Theft Purple does get it. Here's the DJ, but oh, not much of a follow get... through. Here comes Sanford and Sanji. The flicker on forward. Caught easy gets. The turtle giving some shields over. Kyura barely survives. Doctor's blood by Sanford. That's already one down. Lunar barely gets away. Can Benny Cutie take to the skies? The answer gonna be no. Sunshine does push them away. That'll be just one casualty from Fimp. Right now, I kind of feel like it's still fine because what they want to do 
is trying to get to the late game, and now they they just don't want Luna to go home. They're sending him home, but in a different way. That's so brutal. That's so brutal. Pass it from Kaja oh. into the first skill coming in from Benny QT. Where and now even from? Carl Adizzi trying to invade this time. It's on Kira. He did use his retribution. I see. Oh. He just didn't show. The, 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 the status didn't show. Yeah, that's so funny. So funny. It's so messy. It oh, really man. is. It's going to be quite a brawl for a majority of this game. I just... Oh, oh. Divine Judgment on Apex 47 might be forced to use the Cult Alder soon. And there it is. RWM keeping them cordoned in. They pop the extra life. Apex 47 gonna go down here. Benny Cutie gets the kill. Thanks to the skies. Sunshine survives. Here's a Lunar with a Falling Star Moon. Less than half health for all members of Echo up top. But there's not much they can do. Considering how last game we saw the Phobias go for a full damage build, is this the same case? Oh, Black Dragon form! Carl Deezy and Sanford slams Kyura! Oh, he goes down, not much he can do! There's a knock-up on the alien, they know they can't kill this Harla, they rotate away. Honestly, answering the question, I kind of feel like yes. And at this point, I really feel like what Fireflux Impunity should do is to delay everything. Make sure you don't get caught. Kyura right now is trying to hyper farm because he's not just taking his own jungle. He's trying to take Carl Teasy's jungle. So in a way, that's kind of slowing down your opponent. But again, they got to wait for everyone to get online. And it's not working. Uh, last I checked, Carl Teasy was at 6. He just got the 7. And Kyura was already at 7. So where's his XP coming from? The jungle, man. Like, taking it, like, you have more on yourself. And you're denying Carl Teasy as well. So it is doing double duty here. I'm gonna play selfish for as long as possible, right? It doesn't matter about getting a, uh, getting a turtle for all TZ is like, eh, that's great for the rest of your team, but maybe not for yourself because you can see that Kira is just power farming. Now, let's look at the items here. We're not gonna get too much. Oh! oh. RWM plus the heavy spin. Sunshine is down, folks, but no! It took him a while, does get an ult off. Apex 47 is gonna be up next. Double kill for Sanji. Not much Airfloss could have done there, while mid is just barely surviving. Kira and Alien clearing the wave. Looking at a 6-0 with a 2.8k goalie, it looks really bad. But again, right now, this is what, what something whispered to me. I think Echo wants to be explosive. I think they want to end this as soon as possible. I, I think they're mad. You can see it. They're playing dead serious. That's right. They look at Vimp and they're like, all right, you want to be treated like equals? Let's do it. Right now, looking at the situation, Medicuity now has two core items. Looking at Sunshine, not yet. 4,000 and 2,000. That's a big difference for the gold laners. And it's going to impact them heavily come team fight. And the thing is, Sunshine, he needs three items, man. Four will be a luxury here. We'll even get to that point. Question is, Echo, the last time we saw him play against, uh, playing against Firefox and Purity, game one, as well as game two, they had a really great early game in game one, couldn't close it out as cleanly, but eventually got to it. Game number two is where we did see a very similar situation here, where it's teetering on the very edge, and yes, 3.2k looks like a lot, considering this is high tier international play, but we've seen Fireflux actually bounce back from it. Yep, it's capable, uh, it, it's possible, they're capable of actually shrinking that lead, but now Echo makes a play for down bottom, RWM by Sanji helping clear the waves. Given vision over way deep behind that tier one as called easy attempts. Grant that purple buff for a heavy spin. Hitting Kira down. Where did the purple buff go? Here comes Sanford from the west. Popping that called out there early. Apex 47 force into a compromised position. Look at all the damage. Down goes Kira. Sanford gets one. The Apex Predator smells blood. Benny Cutie takes his skies. Alien goes down. Sunken as well. Oh! 2K for Big Benny. And triple kill as well. Down still up. Lunar barely survived, but no. That's a maniac for the storm! What a clean fight! What an incredible fight from Echo! Dude, was that a second or a third maniac? Second maniac? I think Sec so. Third maniac boots yesterday? Was there more? Right now, again, maniacs all around here in MSE. No savages. No savages yet. <laughs> no, no savages just yet. But again, we got to look at an instant replay. And the thing that I want to bring up, which kind of has nothing to do with this fight. Actually, you have a goal, have an a experience advantage on the Granger. So even though they're losing, 
it looks like they're not losing that hard, but again, with, with Echo not giving space for five bucks, oh. I don't know what can be done. There's another fight that happened, because Sunshine died and the Apex died, and they're pushing this gear to up top. I don't know, man. <laughs> what just happened? I mean, this is a conversion. From 5k, they got an extra 2.8, and, uh, and now turning into a 3k lead. Echo, they got their foot on the gas. They cannot let go just yet. The last time they did, the high ground defense is great. So keep in mind that Sunshine is going to be a priority target here in this battle. Oh, no. Carl PZ taking everything away from Kyura. This XP lead, this gold lead, whatever uh, Kyura is getting over Carl PZ no longer exists. He doesn't have it. And you see that mean thing that Carl PZ did, if I'm not mistaken? He actually left the baby purple. That's going to stop it from, from, from spawning. Just to make it very awkward and force maybe even Carl TC to actually walk in to Fireflux's uh, jungle to get so. But now it's compromised, right? The first side of Power Spike has already fallen into the hands of Echo and they're about to hit their second one. Dude. Look at the, the difference between 1-1 one, one and Matrix. Oh, the goal. 3,000 and change, almost 4. That's big. That's enormous. That's colossal. That's Huge. I, I can't. I can't deal with it anymore. The Astronomical. I, this Esmeralda is just so far behind. How do you expect oh, her yeah. to get four items against a Yeev in the lane? And especially since you're not even taking average. You're not even like going out of your way just to hit supports just for the fun of it and farm up quick. It's You're just taking damage for the sake of taking damage. It's nine minutes in, but it kind of feels like 18 minutes because looking at how Echo is pushing, I, got, I gotta say, it's 13 and 0. 13 and 0. Clean as it gets, not even a turret. Uh, Ju Sun? <laughs> oh, yeah, I actually don't know the zero for Japanese, but. <laughs> I'm surprised you know 13 in Japanese. Yeah, Ju Sun. Ju is 10, Sun is 3. He's nailing it. He's yeah. nailing it. But we're buying time just to see how at least Fireflux immunity is just going to hold on, right? We've seen this position before. We've seen how Echo does it. This time, can they close out this game before Fireflux impunity somehow bounces it back? And this time, I mean, we look at the items of Sunshine, right? He doesn't necessarily have everything he needs to one shot away. He has nothing that he needs because, again, the, the difference in terms of item is way too big and the front lines for fire plus impunity is not there sunshine just just got his bod yep kind of feels like a little bit too late oh here comes an rwm oh my God. sunshine put a tenth of his health lord and the rest of echo just barreling away taking down that inhibitor up top and now mid this wave coming in an early called altar and there sanford is. obliges and there they are coming in dj out of sunshine spelling disaster for firefox impunity heavy spin by the goat hitting alien up against the wall cura firing away alien barely survives can they get a kill oh there's many cutie coming in sandy gets a monster kill it's just three left can they defend there's this big canyon away they're gonna clear the waves no. instead move over to the bottom lane inhibitor this is just cruelty now echo they're not taking any risks against this Turkish squad they see them as equals they'll be treated like adults divine judgment on apex lunar barely alive benny cutie takes him down and there's the rwm pura falls 2k for benny make it three and now the base goes down echo take the series 15,000 goal lead as we predicted it's gonna be a wash a very very quick game two to one echo against fire Flux impunity Though to be fair, Echo won, and in the last game, they won quite hard. But the thing is, now, we said before the game, if Fire Plus Infinity could get one game, that's still an amazing beat. Yup, they cheese it out with the draft. Coach Dukan decides, you know what, no more cheese, play standard with us. Look me dead in the eye and treat us like true competitors.